The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Oops, sorry. Uh, you got to own it now. You started this <laughs> thing. Well, we got, we got Greg in here. Welcome to HSS, perpendicular to the curves. <laughs> Greg, uh, sorry, I accidentally started a little bit early, early here, so let's give us a few minutes and uh, wait for the rest of the guys to come in. I think since you started early, you got to hum uh, elevator music from here on out, Kevin. <laughs> well, we were just talking about Tim being tired, so we we'll just uh, that might really put him to sleep or pass him. You start the thing off early, and you're looking to blame Tim. Crank some '80s rock, maybe I'll wake up. Get some ACDC going. There you go. ACDC, Aerosmith. And for those of you guys that uh, are going to be watching this on YouTube, I got asked the question today, who is this guy in, in the picture? Is this me? No, this is Tim Micah right here. So for anybody that wants to know what Tim Micah looks like, this is Tim Micah. Or what? What are you even showing, Kevin? Is my screen not showing? No. <laughs> there. Ah, uh, there you go. <laughs> you got to use your imagination. Yeah. <laughs> no, that is not me. That's not Tim Micah Jr.? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> we, hire, uh, we hire models because uh, if we... We put our faces on there. Uh, nobody will attend our night class. There you go. It's been well documented that you've got a face for radio. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> I got to get my tabs opened up here. I'll be ready to go in a minute. Yes, All right, I see we're at 8 o'clock here, so I see a couple people more rolled in. Um, and I do see all the regulars in here, so I won't go through the boring introductory. And uh, just want to thank everyone for joining the night class tonight. And sorry, uh, we had a little pause in the night class just because of traveling uh, between Greg and myself. And <laughs> that's what we were actually just talking about, uh, what airports I should be flying into, what airports Greg should be flying into, and... Uh, jet lag and all that good stuff. But all right, stop blabbling here, and we will get into HSS perpendicular to a curve. So last, or not last week, a uh, couple weeks ago, uh, we were covering morph between boundary curves and as well as parallel to a curve. Now, what we're going to be covering tonight is perpendicular to curve, so ninety degrees to a curve line. So we're going to, I'm going to show you a couple different examples here of if we were to do this with linear versus perpendicular and a couple different scenarios. So first thing we'll do is we'll start off with our HSS and hit or drop down here and perpendicular to a curve. Now, and I've said this in all the classes, but if you guys are missing these features down here, let your account manager know and we can get those added for you. But for tonight, we are going to be working on perpendicular to curve. Our geometry. So drive surface is the surface that we would like to machine. So we'll go ahead and hit new. And we've got a couple different surfaces here that I need to select. All right. So that is the area that we would like to select or uh, to cut. So now my lead curve, kind of like what we've been talking about before, is what direction do we want our toolpath to follow? 
So in this scenario, we can draw a sketch line. So if I go ahead and grab like the center sketch line right here, we can use that. And just remember, we don't need a physical sketch line in there. I'm going to show you a couple of different examples um, of just take, taking geometry that is already there. So going forward, go ahead and grab our tool. And we'll use our 125 ball mill levels. Don't have to, uh, well, we do have to worry about it, but we're going to kind of skip over this because it's set to automatic. And like I've been trying to um, get impregnated in your brain here is take this as in, in steps. So we got our geometry, we got our tool. Let's just go ahead and save and calculate. Use this as a building block. Okay. So now we are telling it that we want our tool path to go perpendicular to this curve that is inside here. And that curve was just a projection of a sketch. Now, let's just say I don't want to have to draw a sketch on there. We can definitely use our lead curve as one of these down here as well. So we'll go ahead and chain that, go and accept it, and we'll get the same results. So kind of going back to a uh, little bit of repeat, but kind of go back and forth is you can draw whatever curve that you would like it to follow in here or go perpendicular to that curve and it will follow that geometry. If we wanted to keep it square, we could chain our square and I'll, I'll show you that in the different part here. But uh, basically it, it kind of, it, it is what it says up here. We are going perpendicular. Our tool path is going perpendicular to a curve. So now, go ahead, Greg. I was going to say, for anybody who's been watching the night class over the last uh, couple installments, um, everything should be looking very similar to you guys. What we're doing now is just controlling the toolpath flow. That way you get the desired tool um, path and vector that you want to get the optimal uh, surface finish that you're looking to achieve. Um, I think, Kevin, you should probably, or uh, I, I would say go with that uh, line there on the edge of the block right above your cursor. That way uh, people can see the difference between the perpendicular to the curve that is uh, selected with the um, kind of uh, spline geometry that you have as well to, as just opposed to the straight line. Um, of talking? the edge block there of the rectangle oh so just go off the straight line right here yeah yeah okay and just do like a saving copy and that way everybody sure. can see what the difference. difference is going to look like absolutely now before we do that what i want to do is clean up our tool path a little bit um and I, I, sorry for everyone that is in here that has been watching the hss series because this is definitely going to be a repeat but we we can see we got some jump ups and jump um going up to our clearance here. And what's happening is it's finding a little gap. So what we can do is go to our links section and go to our links between slices, and we can just tell it to do a blend spline. What this will do is instead of going up to the clearance, now it's the tool path is going to stay down and just continue that cut all the way through, not going up to the clearance. So, and we can also set up, um, like I said, a little bit of repeat, but we can also do the small moves as well. So we get that nice smooth blend spline going all the way through. So now we got that nice curve in there and we are done right there. So let's go ahead and make a copy. And let's see the difference between versus our following our, our, our curve that is going on right here to a straight line. So we'll grab that straight line. Not going to change any other parameters in here, just my guide. Oh, Windows update is uh, it's killing me here.
one second while well, all the works uh, crashed out on me here. Greg will chalk that out as a uh, fault. Thanks for playing the game. Yeah, I'll take that one. <laughs> I was waiting for something there. All right, so let's get back in here. And let me just make sure. So our leaf curve right there. All right, so now let's compare. Um, figure out the best way to show this to you guys. We'll do a straight down view. So here is parallel or perpendicular to the back curve. And here is parallel or perpendicular to the curve of the, the part of it here. So we can see our tool path lines are exactly perpendicular 90 degrees from this line right here versus if we're going off of a straight we are 100% perpendicular coming all the way through here. So if I was to draw a line straight down, we would see toolpath that is perpendicular to that area. And like Greg said, these are just additional tools for you guys to really achieve the finish that you're looking for in there. Now this may come in factor of, we don't want that mere finish. We just, we want to be able to see our tooling lines, but we want our tooling lines that our ball and mill has left to follow a specific direction. So you can get really artistic in here of getting these lines to follow whatever uh, line that you draw in there or perpendicular to that line at that point too. Okay. So hopefully everybody can see the difference. So right over here, we are doing straight, but over here, our lines are almost at a 45 degree to this uh, our part of over here, but it's staying perpendicular to our curvature that we selected. And, you know, like Greg was saying, we can click on whatever geometry that we want. We can go off of the actual geometry that's there. We can go off of sketch geometry that we just did a um, transform on. So whatever, whatever works for, for you guys as well. Now, since we were covering HSS work between boundary curves a few weeks ago, let's just see what that tool path would look like. Because to me, from my first glance, I would say work between boundary curves would be the ideal tool path on this, but I'll show you the difference here. And I'm not gonna tell you which one is right and which one's wrong. It's all based off of what kind of surface finish that you're looking for. So we'll grab the exact same geometry. And we'll go ahead and grab this curve as our start. Our end curve. Grab the same tool. Should have just done save and copy. All right, so using the, the same step over, you can see that we have quite a different uh, difference in gaps between this first tool path down to this tool path over here versus we turn that off and turn this one on. We have a lot closer there. Now, both of them are both step to 50 thou step over. So let's go back to this one. Well, it's up to 50,000 step over. But so it, like it's, I guess where I'm getting that this is definitely something, um, <laughs> trying to think here. You, you need to think a little bit outside the box to really achieve the tool path that you're trying to, to achieve there. So right here, we step this over now. 
Uh, we are perpendicular, so let's go ahead and go back to the morph between boundary curves. Now, Kevin, maybe if you um, did the solid verify or the new uh, solid cam simulator, just kind of show what the scallops look like when you do each sure. version of these tool paths. So let's that way people can see, like if you're prioritizing the radius up along the top, it's going to be hard to achieve that with the parallel of the curves without yeah. really refining your step over to a very small amount um, as it goes yeah. towards the, uh, would that be the apex of that curve? Yep. So this one we are doing uh, perpendicular to a curve. And let me just open up this operation real quick here. And our geometry that we want to stay perpendicular is to the, the curve down here. So let's just see how this looks in here. And like I said, this is set to a 50,000 step over. So you can see we have some pretty uh, large scallops in there. Um, and we can definitely refine those. And let's, let's just do a regular solid verify. I mean, once we, um, in a few weeks, we're going to be really focusing on 2021 and we'll really focus more on the, the simulator that's in there at that point too. But you can kind of see we're getting the exact same results in here. So we are, this one, we're following that guide curve of our, sh our shape going all the way through over here. So now we have out of here, and let's bring this perpendicular up there, and we will suppress the first one. Verify. Now this is doing perpendicular to the straight line there. Hopefully I can get this rotated around so you guys can all see the nice, or the, the finish that it's leaving there. So to me, and Greg definitely tell me otherwise, but to me, it seems like we almost have identical finish between the perpendicular to a curvature of a sketch versus a straight line. So this one is a straight line following all the way through. Now, let's go ahead and we'll suppress this one. Well, where you're gonna see the variation is as that spline starts the curve back the other way, or the tool path, it, you see it a lot more segmented on the right side as it's crawling up that 45 degree. Right over here. Or as it's pretty smooth. Yep. And please forgive me because I'm on a uh, hotel Wi-Fi, so I'm probably <laughs> about 30 seconds behind the conversation. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as it starts to make that transition from the lower end where it's at the smaller Y value up to the greater Y coordinates, um, you'll see a lot more segmentation there when you're going parallel to just that straight or perpendicular to just that straight line. Let's let's do this. Let's unsuppress this one and go ahead and simulate. Let that play through real quick. But I, I think where the biggest differentiation we're gonna have is between the perpendicular and the morph between morph. two curves yeah. that you've done. So let's just take a you're gonna have a parallel style toolpath compared to a perpendicular style toolpath. And what you want to highlight on is at the very tip of that uh, radius at the top. Sure. Right there. So we'll, I just took a snip of that one. So now let's go ahead and suppress this one. Let's press simulate. So like Greg was saying, if we focus in and over 
over here and then I'm going to overlay what we've done right here. So we can actually see there is quite a bit of difference of scallop, at least from what I can tell here, that going following a straight line curve versus the curvature of the part. We have a, a rougher finish over here versus over right here following the part. And this is kind of the main section I'm looking at right here. Now we come over, we can do this with the picture and picture here. Yeah, it's kind of tough. So over here on the right or the left hand side, it's almost the almost identical. Um, you can see it's a little bit better following that guide curve based instead of using a straight line curve, but um, not much to be able to tell. But like Greg was saying, on the right hand side, we can really tell the difference there. Now, let's go ahead and suppress that guy. And let's go ahead and simulate our morph between boundary curves. And we can see right here, we have quite a large gap right here. And this is because we're very vertical in here. Um, but we do have quite a big scallops coming up towards the top where on the bottom, we got a nice smooth finish down here. Now keep in mind, with our work between boundary curves, I have set our toolpath parameters to 10 thou versus 50 thou. But if we're trying to achieve um, almost the same finish, we still can use our work between boundary curves, but instead of going, you know, following this being our starting curve and working our way around the part, what we can do is go back to our geometry, our start curve here. So well, that's our start. Now let's see if we calculate that. And actually, let me cancel that. Go back to our tool path parameters, put that back at 50 thou. And then let's go ahead and clean up our path. We'll go into our link section here. So now you can see we're, we're almost achieving the same tool path as our perpendicular uh, to a curve. So it is, it's not following the straight line like we selected, but it's also not following our perpendicular to curve as well. It's kind of doing a more all the way through and it's, um, let me go ahead and unsuppress this one. So you can kind of see it's, Pretty similar, but we're, we're not following the curvature of this line anymore. We're all worried about from this curve line over here to this curve line over here, morphing it in between each other. So just another idea that to throw out at you guys is you can, there's more than one way to skin a cat in this scenario. And let's unsuppress this one. Kevin, can you make the uh, toolpath of the perpendicular of the curves a different color than the toolpath of the morph between curves that you've just done? Absolutely. And uh, just kind of overlay those. That way we can see the differences between uh, two toolpaths that you've done. 
because it looks like you're getting a little bit of an S curve in the morph between curves toolpath. And once again, this is being spoken as uh, somebody who's an hour, hour ahead of you time zone wise, but <laughs> jelly. 30 seconds behind you in <laughs> webinar time. <Yeah. laughs> okay, so the morph between boundary curves is the red. It's a little tough to see. Um, and then the perpendicular to a curve, and I just have to double check, make sure we're going off the flat face here. This is why labeling comes in handy. Sure. So that's the curvature of the surface. So there depends on where you look at and, and, and what kind of finish you're trying to look at, but you can see the morph between boundary curves. If we go over here, there's not a whole lot of difference. Our lines are pretty much parallel. But as soon as we start getting into a curve, we start almost following the straight line curve at this point. But up here, we're kind of doing a mix between this straight line up here and our curve line down here. So hopefully, I'm not trying to confuse anybody. Hopefully this is making sense or uh, Hopefully we're being clear for you guys. But you can kind of see the difference here. And let's go ahead and turn off that path and turn on. And this is perpendicular to this curve up here. And I guess what we're trying to say is more than anything, um, if you guys are trying to follow a specific curve for your tool path to follow, we can draw, you can draw that in there. You can follow off the, the guide curve down here you can draw a sketch in there and we can tell it to go parallel to that curve. We can do perpendicular to that curve, or we can morph between those two curves that you've drawn in there. So a lot of different options in there for you. Put that temp yeah, it kind of looks to me like um, your perpendicular to curve gives you a lot more um, control of how the tool path is going along the length of the sweep, I'll call it, yes. versus your um, morph between two curves is giving you a starting point and ending point and how it gets there, the software kind of does it uh, its own way along yes. that route. Exactly, yep, yep. And kind of like what we talked about three, four weeks ago is if that curve that we draw in there is short. So if we just went off of maybe this line right here, and use that as our perpendicular to curve. Anything that exceeds past that, the software is just gonna do um, what it thinks is, is gonna be the best way. So we kind of show that with keeping our, our um, as an example, just doing shorter lines in there versus the entire line. And it will just kind of go to where it wants, kind of like with the morph between boundary curves. It just thinks that all, all it's concerned is, all right, I need to start on this line right here and I need to make it to this line, and I want to blend my tool path through that entire cut. Where if you really want that control, like Tim's talking about, you can select on that exact curve surface right there, and you can get it to follow that curve going all the way through, or perpendicular to that curve all the way through. Very point, Tim. Thank you. Now that I've hopefully not confused anybody on this one, any questions on this part before we move to our next one? See anything coming in, so we'll go ahead and hop over to our next part here. Now, a couple different examples here. Now, this isn't uh, more geared towards toolpath finish type, is what we're worried about right here. So, what I want to show you guys here is our first one is going to be parallel to a curve we showed a few weeks ago. So we'll go ahead and do our parallel curve. We'll go ahead and grab our geometry. I'd like to cut that, that. This one and our radius. And we want it to follow the circle. 
and we'll go ahead and grab the tool. And like I said, let's do this as building blocks. So let's go ahead and save and calculate, see what we got. See, I got a lot of retracts going in here, but in my toolpath parameters under sorting, I'm doing a zigzag. So if I switch this over to spiral, we'll have one entry point, one exit point. So we're doing a nice spiral entry or going around this part. Now, if you're trying to achieve a different surface finish, let's go ahead and make a copy. And we'll switch this over to perpendicular to the curve. So I want to do perpendicular to this edge down here. And obviously on this one, um, it's going to be going up and down. So I want to switch this back over to zigzag or one way. I forgot to grab my uh, new geometry here. So I want to cut this base. All right, let's try that again here. So now we're looking, like I said, this is just more or less, um, each, each one of you guys know what kind of finish you guys need to achieve for your surface. surface. So right here, if we do a perpendicular curve, we can see our finish is going to we're going to have a larger scallop over down at the bottom versus at the top because our lines are much closer together because we're telling it to do perpendicular to the curve versus over here, we're just telling it to morph between, or actually we're just telling it to do parallel from this curve right here. So let's go ahead and both of these set are set at 50 thou. Um, but like I said, one is parallel to the curve, one is perpendicular. Let's just go ahead and see what they look like. Um, get rid of my rock splitting. Here, I just don't verify. Nope, didn't get rid of it. Oh, it's still connected. Let's go to. Just getting rid of these slugs that were in there when I was just doing a roughing it out. So like I said, both of these are set to 50,000 step over. And we can see, we definitely have a little bit nicer of a finish doing perpendicular over here versus doing our parallel over here. So this is kind of where it comes down to what kind of finish are we looking for. Now, when yeah, it comes, Kevin, yeah. can you uh, highlight the cycle, the estimated cycle time? Yep, that's what I'm just going to do. So, in my operation, I can go to cam tree view and we are going to show machine time. So one, we have our, this one right here, we're at six and a half minutes versus 10 minutes. So at this point, we're, we are going to spend a little bit more time over here to get a better finish, which is, um, pretty obvious, but what we can do in here, if we want to get a little bit nicer of a finish instead of doing a 50 thou step down, let's drop this down to a 10 thou. So now I would say these are going to be pretty comparable. Let's go ahead and simulate. And it's just taking a second for that uh, that ten thousand step over to update here. So let's give it a second. Okay. 
Cue the elevator music, please. <laughs> All right. Get rid of these over here. All right, so now we get in here surface finish wise. I can see over on the left hand side, we do have a little bit of a smoother finish versus over on the right hand side, but we've also tripled our, our cycle time. So completely in your guys' hand on what kind of surface finish you're trying to achieve, as well as how long do you want this to be running on the machine. So a lot of different options there. And, you know, the question that we get asked most is why do you guys have so many options in there? And like I've said in the past, as machinists, we are anal. We like to see things a specific way. And we want to give you guys the tools to be able to achieve that tool path that you're looking for. So you got two different examples just kind of showing the difference between the two here. And we could probably get by with... Um, maybe a 25,000 step over, we can just try versus a 10,000. And we should have a pretty close finish. So now let's go ahead and simulate. Stock. So now we can see we have scallops going around the part versus up and down the part, but our surface finish, I would say, is pretty comparable uh, between each other. But at this point, we are also spending um, more time going around it in a circle versus perpendicular. So there is, I mean, we got uh, three minutes longer to achieve the same finish. But like, like I said, you guys know what's going to be best for your part or for the, the finish on there. So just giving you a couple different options. Is that... Am I saying that right, Greg? I'll answer for yeah, Greg. Yeah, it's all about having the uh, tools available to achieve the desired toolpath. So, yeah. And go ahead and go, go ahead, Tim. Yeah, I was just agreeing, agreeing along with that. Is uh, give out you get more more options in your tool belt to do the things the way that you need to get it done. Yep, absolutely. Any questions on these two parts? Or Greg, am I missing anything on these two parts that we should show? No, I think uh, the vast majority of what's being shown off has been shown um, repeatedly over the course of the last few episodes. So I'd say that if anybody hasn't seen the last couple of KevCam night classes to refresh themselves, um, and maybe you can uh, shout out to where they can find those videos. Yeah, definitely, guys. If you guys go to, on YouTube, Solid Cam University, um, you can see the last one that we did, Greg and I did, was HSS Mark Between Boundary Curves. We have our HSS Parallel Surface, um, Parallel Curve, Hatch. So all the HSS series are in there for you guys. And if you want, you can also head over to the website, and to get here, just go to webinars and click on KevCam, and you can click on the miss the, the last night's class, and that will bring you right over to it as well. So, But all these tool paths are going to follow the same general structure um, to defining these tool paths. And it's just a matter of how do you want the flow of that tool path to come out. 
Absolutely. and uh, we give you a lot of options there. So well, yeah, it's kind of one of those things where there's not a lot of difference between what we're showing you tonight and what we showed you uh, a couple weeks ago, but it is another powerful tool that you can use to get the desired results that you're looking for. Yep. So from my chair, uh, there's not a lot else to go over that uh, we haven't gone over already. <laughs> well, so I'm pretty content. That surprising me, but we're good. I'll, I'll take it as that. Now, next week, um, we'll be covering uh, morph between two adjacent surfaces, which is very similar to the morph between two boundary curves. And then we will have a week off just because I'll be traveling again. And then we will be covering uh, the projection side of things uh, and how powerful the projection is in that for you guys. So um, give it uh, tomorrow. Uh, you guys should begin an email on the morph between adjacent surfaces as well as projection. Um, definitely sign up for those classes as well. Like I've said in the past, any questions that do come up, um, for sure everyone has my email address in here. Uh, for those that you are, of you are watching on YouTube, sorry, I can't talk this late. Um, my email is actually oops, down here in the description. So definitely feel free to reach out to me if you guys have questions or if you guys would like to see um, something added into the night classes as well. So, all right. Well, I just want to thank everyone for joining the night class tonight. Thank you, Greg, and thank you, Tim, for helping out. Uh, and, and thank you, Greg and Kevin, both for uh, keeping these classes going and um, getting these things all put up on YouTube. It's a great tool for all the customers out there that uh, looking for these uh, tips and tricks. And you know, people are asking a lot of times of, uh, hey, what do I, you know, what what's really all this entail? And I, I take them right back here to this YouTube channel and. Uh, do the quick search and give them a couple options as far as what to watch. So appreciate uh, all you guys doing this. Absolutely. Anything that we can do to help you guys out. So um, thanks, Tim. And uh, with that being said, we will talk to everyone, hopefully everyone next week, and we'll be covering work between adjacent surfaces. All right, everyone, have a great rest of your night. Bye. All right. Have a good evening. Bye.